All right, welcome to part two of my library tour. watch part one you can go back and watch that I'll uh, link that video at the top of your screen probably right now um, but uh, you can watch this uh, probably in any parts really but I'm just breaking this into multiple parts so I can spend some time on some of the videos like I said in the first video I uh, <clears throat> like to give the books a little bit more time it's done in the same style as like what the for the love of comics did with his library tour I really like the way he did his so that's what I want to do with mine so today we're going to cover these two shelves as I scan down. And let's get started. So up here we have the Akira box set. Uh, Katsu, Katsuhiro Tomo's, um, his magnum opus for sure. Absolutely one of the top 10 greatest comic books of all time. I feel like everyone needs to have read that at least once in their life. Um, it is a manga. In this box it was the first time that it was ever collected in uh, left to right the the original orientation of the pages that you get in japan with your typical manga uh, but there are dark horse if you have an aversion to that um, if it's hard for you to <clears throat> read manga for that reason i understand it it was hard for me first two uh, but dark horse and viz the paperbacks that you find like the phone books the thick um, paperbacks those are right to left so those are done in the orientation that you used to with american comics or western comics if you want to read it that way but it should be read by everybody that in this box it's great then uh, i think i'm going to scan across the whole top shelf of this section and then i'll go down to the different shelves but here is uh mike allred's madman library is one through three um, volume four comes out soon and then we'll have a volume five to complete the set that collects all of Mike Allred's creator-owned stuff um, with Madman kind of paving the way there. I said it in the first part, and I'll say it again. Mike Allred is my absolute number one favorite cartoonist going today. Um, and these library editions have been a real treat to kind of explore his artwork and see it progress over time. Then we have the four library edition volumes of Umbrella Academy. Um, Gerard Way is... He's a... An amazing mind. I uh, I was a bit huge fan. Oh, well, I still am, I guess. A huge fan of My Chemical Romance back in high school, um, and then I've subsequently tried out his comic books and found out that he is a very creative genius in a multiple ways, uh, not just music but also with comic books. And he actually started got to start with comic books. He went to art school, and before he even did music in My Chemical Romance, he was pursuing a career in comics. So he's not just one of those celebrities that are being a culture vulture, if you will, and trying to get, pave their way into comic books. Um, but yeah, these are fantastic. These are kind of George Way's love letter to the Grant Morrison's Doom Patrol run, if you will. It's been adapted to a Netflix series I'm sure you're aware of. Uh, but these are the first three volumes here, and then the spinoff, You Look Like Death, with writing help from Sean Simon on that last one. Sorry, I'm trying to hold the camera in a way and also look at the books. Ether. This is a Matt Kent and David Rubin's <clears throat> story. And <clears throat> this is the library edition. And I love this because the premise that Matt Kent came up with, because I guess it was David Rubin's idea, but what sold Matt Kent on it was that Matt Kent kind of hates the idea of magic in stories. He feels like it's just like a deus ex machina that can solve any problem you need in fiction. So this is kind of Matt Kent's way of exploring that and how to make sense of magic in fiction um, in a kind of a scientific way. Uh, so it's really a fun story. Then we have Black Hammer. Um, all the Black Hammer library editions that I have here. The first two volumes here are of the main story. And then we have the World of spinoffs. Uh, I, I am missing volume four of the World of ones. And then there's going to be, I think, like three more library editions coming out this year. Well, this is a uh, an amazing take on a modernist um, 
superhero story. Uh, Watchmen is always cited as like a deconstructionism of superheroes. Black Hammer, I always cite as being a reconstructionist of superheroes. And Jeff Lemire, Dean Ormston, and the rest of the crew there um, does a fantastic job of that. These are the Jeff Darrow section of my library. So you have Hard Boiled here, which is written by Frank Miller. Um, as well as this one was written by Frank Miller, but this is Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot. And then these are all just pure Jeff Darrow. This is Shaolin Cowboy, uh, which are ostensibly volumes one and two. I'm missing the third Shaolin Cowboy, and then the fourth one comes out later this year. Uh, but Jeff Darrow, I love that he releases these in these like European album style oversized hardcovers. Jeff Darrow has a lot of influence from European comics, uh, most pointedly uh, Mobius. This is the Hellboy Library Edition. Um, volume 1 is next to my bed right now. For I'm doing a big Hellboy reread right now. Um, but these are volumes. So I have volumes 1 through 6 and then Hellboy in Hell. And then this is actually uh, The Amazing Screw on Head. Um, but I also I just love that the spines kind of line up. Um, I wish that all of McDonald's library editions would be that way. Then we have Valerian. Um, this was originally a, a French comic book or comic strip, sorry, um, of a sci-fi pulp story that was originally called Valerian and Loreline. Um, these editions are just called Valerian, I think, to match up with the movie that came out, probably. Uh, but there's seven volumes of this. And like I said, this is a fantastic sci-fi pulp action. Um, and each hardcover has, like, some bi biographical stuff, historical documents of the making of this comic strip. And they even take into account some of the... Uh, the creators talked about how there might have been some ideas from this comic strip borrowed for the likes of Star Wars and whatnot. So this came out way before Star Wars and was influential on the science fiction genre, uh, their fourth. Then I have the Rick Remender section of my library. This will be expanding this year because it appears that Rick Remender is reprinting all of his hits um, with in hardcover format, but that's kind of bleeding into the next shelf, so I'm going to stop right there. Actually, with Valerian on this video, I'll talk about Rick Remender a little bit on the next part. And I'm going to move down to this section. Actually, I'm apologizing for the lighting here. I'm trying to not get that glare. I don't know if I can uh, fix that or not. There's a window right behind it, but I'll zoom in and stuff. This is the rest of the Silver Age Marvel section. So on part one, we went over this part that was at the beginning of it. I have almost all of the Marvel Silver Age omnibuses. It's kind of like a goal of mine. I feel like the Marvel Silver Age is like the greatest accomplishment in fiction um, compared to Shakespeare and Tolkien and J.K. Rowling or whoever you want to put up there. I think everything they accomplished in the Marvel Silver Age is leaps and bounds above that. Um, so it's kind of like my goal to collect all of it in omnibus format that they release. And I have most of it. So starting off with Captain America by Jack Kirby here. This is ostensibly a volume four. So in the first part you saw me have, I had uh, volumes one, two, and three. The last issue of this one bleeds right into the issue of here. So even though it doesn't say volume four on it, there's no missing issues between three and this one. But this is Jack Kirby's return to the character. So Jack Kirby created the character with Joe Simon in the Golden Age. Then he resurrected the character with Stan Lee in the Silver Age. And this is Jack Kirby by himself in the Bronze Age. Um, so you have like 40s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, three different decades that Jack Kirby does that character. And it's awesome to see his own um, evolution of that character. Then we have Daredevil, um, Volume 1. I love this era of Daredevil. Um, obviously, Frank Miller is one that like really evolved the character in a way that that became the new starting point for people to read Daredevil. But I think it's still important to go back to these um, stories. You have, I mean, the fantastic writing of Stanley. I love his writing style. But you also have the artwork from Bill Everett, um, who did Submariner. You have Joe Orlando and Wally Wood from the EC Comics era. And you have Gene Colan, just the amazing Gene Colan, um, and John Romita Sr., this is Defenders Volume 1. Try to get my hand in here. This was a kind of a surprise to me how much I enjoyed this. I really wanted this volume um, 
not only because I was collecting Silver Age omnibuses, but I wanted the Volume 2, which has the Steve Gerber era. I talked about in the uh, <clears throat> first video how Steve Gerber was my one of my favorite writers ever. Um, but this really surprised me how amazing this was. I love team superhero teams, and especially when there's kind of a ragtag team thrown together and seeing all the personalities and interactions with each other. That's like the most fun thing in comics to me. Um, even... Even, I don't really care about the villains at some points because I just want to see their interactions as a team. This is uh, Doctor Strange by Steve Ditko. This collects all the Steve Ditko era stuff in Doctor Strange. And this is the subsequent volume, um, volume two, which has the Roy Thomas and Stan Lee written tales, but also you have artwork by Gene Colan, Bill Everett, um, Marie Severin, I believe. There's a Severin on the cover. I believe it's Marie, not John, but regardless. Fun continuation of the Ditko mythos then fantastic four volumes one through four um part one i talked about how this is my favorite marvel comic this collects the entirety of the 102 issue run from stanley and, and uh jack kirby which is like one of the greatest runs of comics of all time those 102 issues didn't miss a single issue of the two of them um and i have the first printing of or not the not the very first printing i think this might be the second printing but the original printing of the this volume that's why the spine looks different than these uh, but i do have the tashin book so if they release a volume two i will replace this probably i don't know then I have the incredible hulk volume one volume two is coming out later this year and then mighty thor i have volumes one and three volume four comes out soon which i'll be getting but um, volume two has not been reprinted. I'm hoping it does because I'd like to get that. Then we have shield, the complete collection with a great, uh, combination of Jack Kirby and Jim Steranko artwork. Um, I talked about how much I loved silver age captain America. And that was one of the big reasons why with those two. So this is kind of like the cousin omnibus of that. And from an artistic standpoint, then we have the silver surfer by John Buscema and, Stan Lee. This collects all the that initial run of Silver Surfer comics from those guys. Um, Silver Surfer is often cited as Stan Lee's favorite Marvel character that he ever wrote. This entire volume is being rumored to be collected in a Tashin version, so I'll be getting rid of this omnibus to get that Tashin version if that comes to fruition. Down here I have the continuation of the EC Comics Library. I showed the first eight volumes in the first part, so I'm not going to go through every single one of these. But EC Comics is one of the great chapters in comic book history, um, delving into crime, uh, war comics, horror comics, and science fiction. And each of these volumes are black and white reprints. Um, they each each have a titled artist. So like this one, for instance, is Johnny Craig, The Woman Who Loved Life. This collects a lot of Johnny Craig uh, crime comics in this volume. And then this Terror Train has L. Feldstein horror comics in that volume. Code of Honor has John Severin war comics. So each one is kind of one genre with one artist. And then if, if the artist did enough work, they'll have multiple volumes with their names on it. But I have every volume that's come out so far. And there's rumored to be about 40 total. And I think I have, I think 31 have been released so far. Down here I have The Thing um, by John Byrne, Ron Wilson. Um, this omnibus takes place during the exact same time as the John Byrne Fantastic Four omnibus. So this is a great companion to that. Uh, in the volume two of those, of the John Byrne Fantastic Four omnibus volume set, volume two, the thing leaves and She-Hulk takes, takes his spot in the Fantastic Four. This tells the stories of where the thing was and what he was doing during that time. And I've talked about how I said Fantastic Four is my favorite Marvel comic. The thing is my all-time favorite Marvel character. So... I was really happy to have his name on an omnibus. Hopefully one day we'll get the Marvel 2-in-1 in the same format. Ed Brubaker, Darwin Cook, Paul Galassi, Cameron Stewart on Catwoman. Need I say more? Um, Brubaker and, and Darwin Cook, and, and Paul Galassi for that matter, all-time great crime um, noir artists and writers. Uh, so them doing their take on Catwoman <clears throat> became a must-read for me. The Fourth World, this one's kind of orphaned over here because all my Fourth World books are on a different shelf, but this is Fourth World by John Byrne. The cover artwork there is by Walt Simonson. I have a Fourth World reading order. 
um, or new God's reading order rather on my channel uh, where this belongs. So if you want more information on that, I'll, you can check that video out. This is The Question by Denny O'Neill and Dennis Cowan. Great cover by Bill Sienkiewicz here. Um, this is just volume one. Hopefully they solicit and print volume two rather soon. The Teen Titans by Jeff Johns. Um, this run itself was very pivotal into my comic book reading. Um, I read, I was collecting the trade paperbacks as they were coming out back in high school. And every time one came out, um, I mean, back then too, I didn't even know when they were coming out. I just visited my lo local comic book shop or bookshop or bookstore to hope the new volume was there. Um, but I was reading it as they were coming out and I just loved it. It was super pivotal into my superhero comics reading. So I've now got this omnibus that came just recently got reprinted and I want to read this as an adult to see if it holds up. Um, but I haven't done that yet. The authority by Warren Ellis, Mark Miller, um, Brian Hitch, Frank Whiteley. This omnibus, um, was cited recently as James Gunn's going to adapt this into a series or a movie. I can't remember. Um, but I have the Stormwatch books you'll see on a later shelf that, take place before this but the whole thing is just a great tale and great reading um where there's expanding the possibilities of what superhero comics can provide frank miller and john ramita jr doing superman year one um a lot of a lot of hate on this this was a recent story i think frank miller especially his modern runs have been kind of misunderstood of what his goals are in his writing um but i can do future videos on what I think that is and expand upon that if you wish. And like I said in, in other parts too, if there's any one book you want more, want me to do a closer look on, I, by all means, throw that in the chat or in the comments below and I will, uh, I will do that. I will do separate videos. Sometimes I have trouble figuring out what videos I want to do on books and then that might help me. Darkwing Duck, this collects the Disney Afternoon Adventures Digest books that you might have saw in the grocery store in the 90s. This is the first volume from Fantagraphics collecting a lot of these stories. So it's not just Darkwing Duck. Um, you see like DuckTales, uh, Goof Troop, Bonkers, Tailspin, and even the Gummy Bears. This is Reckless by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. These are done in the style of like dime paperback novels uh, back in the day, but they are comics. Um, and each volume can be read at any time. It's supposed to be like I like the dime paperback novel. So you're in an airport, you pick one up, read it on the airplane, and then kind of toss it. It's done in the that style. Um, only five volumes so far, but it is my all-time favorite Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips uh, team book that they've both done together. And then I have a Van Gogh art print, because why not? But I, I could read like 40 volumes of that, so I hope they continue the series. Down here we have uh, all of my absolute editions on this shelf. Um, you can see here, Absolute Batman Year One, uh, amazing reproduction of that story. If you want Batman Year One, which is maybe a top 10 all-time comic book in history, in my opinion, uh, this is the edition to own. Dark Knight Volume 3, and then Absolute Dark Knight here, which has Dark Knight Straits again also in it. So it's kind of like Volume 1 and 2, and then Volume 3. Uh, the slipcase is next to my bed. I don't know why this book isn't in it right now, but that's why that's loose. <clears throat> but this is a continuation in volume three that Frank Miller did with Brian Azzarello and then his artwork by Andy Kubert and Klaus Jane and Jansen. Uh, Klaus Jansen, who was the inker on the first one. Um, that's a, again, so these, these are all the Frank Miller Batman stories in absolute format with the exception of uh, the Jim Lee, writ, or Jim, Jim Lee drawn Frank Miller written Ulster Batman uh, omnibus edition. Edition. Absolute Killing Joke. This is a, another fantastic edition that's very affordable if you're wanting to try out what the Absolute Edition is. These are all slipcases with hardcovers inside of them. But that's Alan Moore's uh, classic story with artwork by Brian Boland. New Frontier. This is a book that I feel like must be read by every superhero comic book fan. Um, this was Darwin Cook doing all the writing and, and art on this. It's kind of like the grind, the same concept of the Grand Design Project, but with DC Comics. And it's done all in like three-tiered widescreen panels. Um, but Darwin Cook's artwork is just so magnificent and classic looking. Uh, throwback to the Silver Age. But um, this is the Absolute Edition, and I just can't recommend this enough to people that haven't read that. 
Then I have the four Swamp Thing Absolute Editions. Uh, so I have the Lynn Ween and Bernie Wrightson volume here, which collects the first initial stories of the character. And then the three Alan Moore volumes. Then I have All-Star Superman. This was also cited by James Gunn as being adapted um, for a future story. And I can't recommend this enough. It's a 12-issue series by Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly that really explores the Superman character in an honorable, honorable way that'll make you understand and love the character uh, as much as they do. Absolute Transmetropolitan, Volume 1. Volume 2 comes out later this year, and, and I hope to add that to the collection. But this is Warren Ellis and Derek Robertson's uh, great political, thrilling drama of a journalist in the futuristic uh, not post-apocalyptic, but futuristic uh, kind of cyberpunk era. And he's a journalist fighting against the the, the man, if you will. Uh, power and corruption of the government. Absolute V for Vendetta and Absolute Watchmen. Watchmen is my all-time favorite comic book, um, but I've done videos on both of these on my channel as well. And down here is going to be where it gets a little hairy. Um, and this is where... When I move my library into a permanent location, this problem that you see here will be fixed. Uh, it, you won't, I won't have books on their sides like this and stuff, but it's the best I can do right now with what I have. So I'll try my best to go through all these without giving you guys a headache with shaking the camera. Uh, this is Zot by Scott McCloud. This is his take on superheroes. Um, I've done a video on this and how amazing that book is. And it kind of blew me away. This is Culture Corner by uh, Basil Wolverton. I guess I'm going to try to show the cover here. This is his, like a comic strip that he did, and it's like com comedic comics. I talked about Basil a little bit more in, on my last part of the library. This is Dream of the Bat. I'm most certainly going to do a video on this, but this is a bootleg comic of Batman done by Josh Simmons and Patrick Keck, but it's, done, it's put in the slipcase hardcover. It's like the fanciest bootleg comic I've ever seen. And maybe it will ever be released. Crisis Zone. <clears throat> Simon Hanselman is a cartoonist uh, that has created the Megan Mog characters. It's really hard because I want to show off all these covers. I guess you can see the covers there. Uh, Megan Mog and... Uh, well, you can see all the characters there. <clears throat> but this story was taking those characters and putting them into the uh, pandemic. of like So Simon Hanselman is releasing these daily on Instagram, these stories, and this been since been collected in there. Then I have uh, Donald's Happiest Adventures and Mickey's Craziest Adventures by Louis Trondheim and Kermitas. Those are uh, a fun um, exploration of comics where Louis and Kermitas claim to have found old Mickey and Donald comics and reprinted them. Um, you can read more into that in those hardcovers and figure out what happened there if you want. I, I want to do a video on those too. I'm going to do a video on all these books eventually. Then we have The Complete Phantom Bukowski by Noah Van Skyver. He is one of my favorite like, independent cartoonists today that does like a lot of auto-bio comics. Uh, then we have Girl Scouts by Jim Mahfood. He's a fantastic cartoonist. Has like punk rock and hip-hop kind of inspirations to his artwork. Uh, Throwaways. That's I haven't read this. This was thrown in. Literally thrown away. Maybe thrown away, if you will. Uh, into, uh, I think I showed off Godland, the Celestial Editions. I bought those for my friend Sal, and he threw these in. Um, just, you know, sometimes when you buy comics from people, they're friendly and throw in some extras. Making Comics by Scott McCloud. Uh, Nod Away by Joshua Cotter. Scrublands by uh, Joe Daly. Then, uh, I'm not going to go over all of these. Silver Surfer by Lee and Kirby. That's like Jack Kirby's last take on Silver Surfer. The Now Anthology by Fantagraphics, Dan Pusey, got some Bob's Burgers books, Grip of the Combat, Ronan Bebop by Kevin Eastman. Whenever I do my new library tour, when this is all put into its proper place, I'll be able to cover these books a little bit better and more in depth. Uh, Roughneck is important. Maybe I'll throw, throw some highlights out here. Roughneck's important because this library probably would not exist without it. So I, went, like, I spent like five years without reading comic books. And then I probably told a story on my channel before, but uh, my wife bought me a gift certificate for my birthday one year for the, our local comic book shop. 
And I went there with the idea of trying to find, uh, for the first time in five years, reading a comic book and trying to find something that wasn't a big two comic. Um, it was independent. And I remember hearing Jeff Lemire's name on Essex County, uh, one of my favorite pro wrestlers uh, uh, at the time. Um, what's his name? Oh, I can't, I'm drawing a blank. Um, Zach. I can't remember. It's a British wrestler. His name's Zach. I, it's, I've been a number of years since I watched wrestling. Maybe I've switched from comics to wrestling, but um, that's really going to kill me. What's his name? Zach Sabre Jr. Woo! Okay. Zach Sabre Jr. was going on about how great Jeff Lemire's Essex County was on Twitter one day. So I remember the name. My comic book shop did not have Essex County that weekend that I went to buy this, uh, but they did have this one. I went home and read Roughneck in one sitting, and then the next day, uh, my wife and I went out and I went to every bookstore and comic book shop I could find and bought anything I could find with Jeff Lemire's name on it. And the rest is history. This library has now taken over our lives ever since. Uh, let's see some more highlights here. Stan Soapbox Collection. This collects all of the Stan Soapbox columns in that book, which is really cool. There's another Jeff Lemire book. Glenn Head's Chartwell Manor is a haunting true story of a uh, priest slash principal of a private school, I guess, a boy, all-boys school that uh, did some horrific things. Um, and it's uh, and Glenhead was, it's an autobio comic. Uh, but that was one of my favorite books of 2021 that I read. The Rejection Collection. My wife bought me the New Yorker cartoon slipcase that I showed in the first part. She also bought me this for Christmas. Um, this is rejected New Yorker cartoons, which was fun. The Mad Archives, uh, Harvey Kurtzman's comedic uh, comic book that this is the first six issues. I need to get the other volumes of that because Harvey Kurtzman's a, a master. I've done videos on him as well on my channel. Captain Marvel versus the Monster Society of Evil. This is the 21 issue or 21 chapter story by Otto Bender and C.C. Beck back in the golden age when you it was daring to try to tell a story over the cross of two issues. They did it over 21. Um, and this is collected by Gwandaland. Bumperhead, that's a Gilbert Hernandez book. Uh, Jim Woodring's book there. Reed Chancellor, shout out to him. He's a local cartoonist. That's his book, Sad Religion. Um, and that. So, like I said, I'll have more detailed versions of that on a future library tour, if you will. But next section here is all my Marvel Epic Collections. Um, so the Marvel Epic Collections, here's a James Bond Lego. Oh, I just broke it. Lego toy of his Ash... Aston Martin. Um, I'll move that though so I can show off these. Uh, the Epic Collections uh, started off as a way to print issues that have never been printed before and also work as a uh, gap filler between omnibuses and whatnot. And now it's turned into this whole thing. So it's a line where these are printed out of order, these volumes are, but eventually, like if you look at Daredevil here, Eventually, when the Daredevil line is finished, I'm trying to get rid of the glare there, um, you'll have ish every issue and appearance of Dead Daredevil from volumes one through however many volumes of these are, uh, and without any gaps and stuff. So sometimes the omnibuses might omit an issue here or there. Uh, the easiest example I can think of is like Frank Miller. Um, they haven't gotten to that era of the epic collections yet, but when they do, those will have every issue in between that Frank Miller didn't work on. The omnibuses only collect the Frank Miller issues. So there's one that like Steve Ditko did, one issue that he did in like the late 70s, early 80s, I think. That was not in the omnibus, but it will be in the epic collections. So I have Ant-Man. So I'm only collecting certain lines too. I'm not collecting every epic collection. Um, it started off as only collecting the Fantastic Four stuff because I wanted to have every issue of Fantastic Four of the first volume of... Uh, the first volume of... of the Fantastic Four, which ends with, is it 416? Yeah, issue 416. So my goal is to have issues 1 through 416 of Fantastic Four on my shelf. So the, fin the Epic Collection was a great way to pair with my omnibuses to do that. And then it's turned into this crazy thing where I've collected all these other ones. So I'm only collecting certain lines um, and uh, not everything. So I don't have Avengers, I don't have Captain America, I don't have Hulk, and some other big ones. But... Here's Ant-Man and Giant-Man, Volume 1. I have Volume 2 on the way, actually. Black Panther, this is the Jack Kirby's return to the character in the 70s. Conan, I have the first six volumes of that. 
and the glare is really bad. I apologize, guys. Uh, but there won't be any more of that because the Marvel doesn't have the license to those anymore. Then I have Daredevil is one of those that I'm collecting, and I have every volume that's not the Silver Age omnibuses of those. And then Deadpool. Um, this is the only one without the title on the cover. I don't know if it's a mes mistake or not, but it doesn't. Because you can see, like, that one says Daredevil. They all say it on the cover, but Deadpool does not. I don't know why. But I have the second volume of that coming, too. Defenders, I will have when the second volume of Omnibus comes out. I will have those first two volumes. And these also are really cool because they show the volume number on the back. So you see volumes 6, 7, 8, and 9. So if you only want one volume, like me, who I have Black Panther, this random Black Panther volume, there's no volume number on the spine, so it's not going to look weird on my shelf having this random number right here. I put it on the back. So I, I always like that idea. Then I have Excalibur. Um, all five volumes of that that have come out so far. Which I think they've... Have they missed one? Or skipped one? One, two, three, four, and eight. Okay. So there's an example. So Excalibur, they released volumes one, two, three, four, and then eight. So not in order. Eventually, the, you'll fill in that gap. Um, but otherwise, they kind of jump around from, like I said, reasons to... Of a movie coming out of that character to... Wanting to print issues that have never been printed before or collected to maybe uh, taking place right after an omnibus that was just re recently released. Those kinds of things. So I have every Fantastic Four volume except for the ones that have been in an omnibus. Those are out there. Generation X 1 and 2. Ghost Rider. This is the first Ghost Rider. We are getting a, another volume. Uh, this is volume 1 of the Johnny Blaze era. We're getting a volume, I don't know the number of it, but it'll be the Danny Ketch era, which is cool for the 90s. So it'd be really cool on Ghost Rider if they went back and forth between those two. I have Iron Fist here. Um, Luke Cage is by my bed right now. I'm reading that. And then you'll see Power Man and Iron Fist right here. Uh, Luke Cage will only have one volume of, but once we get volume two, we'll have all of the Iron Fist and Luke Cage and Power Man and Iron Fist all collected in epics, which will be cool. Uh, Marvel, oh, uh, Kill Raven. This is the one volume of Kill Raven that we'll get. Marvel 2 and 1. We're finally getting a volume 2 of this, but this is the uh, comic book where Thing teamed up with a different character every issue. Morbius, volumes 1 and 2. I got these because Steve Gerber does a lot of writing in these, and I wanted to check that out. Ms. Marvel, the original era of Ms. Marvel. Moon Knight, and these two are jutted out because there's a light switch back there. Again, things that'll be fixed once we get the proper library installed. I apologize while I put these back in there. With one hand. Okay. Okay, okay. So I have four volumes of Moon Knight. New Mutants. Uh, we almost have this... We almost have the entire 100-issue run of New Mutants collected, including all their... Anytime they appeared in a crossover and whatnot. So we have volume one, two, five... Uh, volume 3 is coming out soon, I believe. And then 6, 7, and 8. Um, so 3 is coming out soon, and then 4, once we get that, we'll have all the new mutants, which will be cool. It's always fun when you fill in a gap, too, on these, or when you just complete a run. Like I said, we have Power Man, Iron Fist, 4 volumes there that collect the entire run there. Punisher, I only have 3 of these. I'm missing a couple volumes that have gone out of print that hopefully I'll be getting one day when they're reprinted. She-Hulk. I went this way rather than getting the She-Hulk by John Byrne omnibus that I wanted because there's a lot of omitted issues in that omnibus and I want the entire thing. So this has all the Steve Gerber issues too. And I think another volume of this comes out soon that will have more Steve Gerber stuff. Silver Surfer. There's uh, six volumes of this so far. I didn't get the first volume, which has all of his appearances in Fantastic Four. And I didn't get, or, and I won't be getting the John Buscema one when that eventually comes out. Thor, so I have the Silver Age omnibuses of that, but I have all the other Thor omnibuses that have come out, or epic collections that have come out after that. Wolverine, this one's annoying because you can see the title on it is lower down. Like, all these look really nice together. They're all very cohesive. Um, but this one, the title is lower. And then they even messed it up on a reprint doing the same thing. There is one printing of this volume where the title lettering is where it's supposed to be. Um, I don't know if it bothers me enough to try to hunt that specific one down. I don't know. But these are all Wolverine ones that have come out. Every single one. I don't have Wolverine and Omnibus. X-Factor. Four volumes of that. 
that's one thing I'm collecting too. Every, anything mutant related, I'm collecting epics too. Um, with the exception of Silver Age material. But like all the Chris Claremont era and thereafter. X-Force, three volumes of that. And then X-Men, I have every volume with the exception of the Silver Age that's come out so far. I think I'm missing... I have an Executioner song on the way too. I think that's out there. Guardians of the Galaxy, these are the thick traits that have come out. Um, these will eventually be turned into epics. Like this... Guardians is finally has a line of epics coming out where this book here will be collected in an epic and then eventually all of these will be. I don't know if I'll change them and upgrade or not. Um, I don't know. Who knows? And then we have Heroes Reborn, Fantastic Four. This is when Jim Lee took the Fantastic Four and did 12 issues on them, retelling their origin. And then I have Heroes Return, when they returned to Marvel after Jim Lee got done. Um, I am missing volume four of that. But this all leads up into... Not ex not even when, with volume four, there's still some missing in between, but it leads up almost to the Mark Wade run. Inhumans volumes one and two; these will eventually be turned into epics, I'm sure. Uh, but this tells all the early uh, Inhuman stories. Then I have BPRD Omnibus volumes one through three, and then Astro City Metro Book one through one and two. Uh, I don't think volume four of BPRD has come out yet, and then Astro City three has come out. I need to get. And then I have another one of these bottom shelves where I'm just going to show you the highlights because it's just the easiest way to do it. It'll give me something to do differently on my new library tour that I do eventually. Uh, so let's do Red Handed by Matt Kent. This is actually has a sketch from Matt Kent in it. I showed off the Mind Management one. This is a painted sketch from Matt Kent and signed. It's pretty cool. Uh, Future Shocks, those have a lot of 2000 AD stuff. Um, there's a lot of Grant Morrison and Alan Moore stuff in there that I liked. Stormwatch, this, these take place right before... Uh, oh, it's right there. Uh, the Authority Omnibus that I showed earlier. Was that on this video? Yes, it was. Um, so these two take place... You need to read both of these before Authority, and then also this single issue. Wildcats versus Aliens. This was not collected in these... Um, and it tells the story of where a lot of these characters end up because, uh, spoiler alert, a lot of the xenomorphs kill some of the characters. So if you're just reading these without this, you're going to get to an issue where you're just like, wait, what happened to all those characters? Um, so I'm trying to do a big read through of that. Dagger Dagger, Volume 1 and 2. It's an anthology series. God's, God Hates Astronauts is a fun comedic series by Ryan Brown. That's the Omni Megabus. Cyber Force Volume 1 by Mike Silvestri, or Mark Silvestri, sorry. Peter Bag stuff right there. He's one of my favorite cartoonists ever. Some Shadow comics by, has art by uh, Howard Chicken, Bill Sienkiewicz, Kyle Baker. Challengers of the Unknown, some early Kirby stuff there, including Fighting American. Over here I have Bowie by Mike Allred. That's a great book. Uh, Luther Strode. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Urban Legends is when Image took over the TMNT and wow, did they have free reign to do whatever they wanted. There's certain turtles lose arms and limb, or limbs. Some turtles lose eyes. Like they, they, they just went crazy with the turtles. But it, it's it's super violent, but it's really, really fun comics. I, I really recommend those for anybody that loves TMNT. The Eternaut is a great um, story by Osterfeld and Brescia that everyone should read. Uh, Clyde Fans by Seth. Pearls Before Swine, I want to highlight that. That's one of my favorite, all-time favorite newspaper strips by Stefan Pastis. Um, I had the opportunity to meet Stefan Pastis um, back in the day with my wife. Uh, <clears throat> he did a show at a local library. But I love Pearls Before Swine, so anybody that wants a good newspaper strip or modern newspaper strip that uh, is to try out, I recommend that one. And then Queen of the Ring by Jaime Hernandez. Star Seas by Charles Glaubitz. Or Glaubitz um, is an amazing mind-bending trippy cosmic story um volume three comes out this year um it's just a wild wild comic that it's hard to even explain but should be experienced by all and that's where i'm going to end this part so this is part two where i went over these two shelves stay tuned for part three it'll be coming up in a week or so thanks for joining me uh, be sure to drop in the comments below any things you have to say about any of these comics Comics you want me to show off in greater detail, even if it's like a very specific volume of an epic collection, I'll do that. Or if you want me to show off, uh, I don't know, 
a section of books or whatever. Um, in a greater detail, I will do that. Or just if you have any comments to say about my collection, I'd love to talk comics with anybody in the comments. Uh, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe, all that jazz. I'll see you in the next video.